Hey Killer Bees, it's Paula B from PaulaBeeFitness.com and on tap today, it's day 23 of the Weight Loss for Women Over 50 series. And you guys, today we are all about strength training. You are gonna need a nice moderate pair of dumbbells for today's workout. And if you don't have a pair that's moderate enough, make sure that you open up the description box below and get my exact three pair set that I bought from Amazon that I use in all of these weighted workouts. You guys, there's no cardio today, so of course there's no jumping, but there's also no transitions up and down from the ground. Round. When you're ready for this one, I'm totally ready. Let's go! All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get moving and grooving, and that means that we are getting started with arm circles and high knees. Oh my goodness, feeling every creak and every groan in every joint of my body on that first arm circle as I do. I tell you what, this is exactly why I do the exact same warm up every single time. I always get that creak and that groan and that crick and that crack. And that's what we're trying to work out when we're doing a warm up. You know, sometimes if you start your warm up a little too fast, a little too aggressively, you miss all those creaks and groans and you go straight into a little bit too much work for your joints. Taking this warm up at a nice slow pace, letting your body actually legitimately warm up really is the point. Plus, plus we get a little chance to chat. You guys, I know for a fact that you were gonna ask me about my jeans that I'm wearing today, and they are not jeans. I know they totally look like it. They even have what looks like pockets in the back and everything. I'm showing you my backside so you can see. You guys, these are some of the most comfortable leggings I have ever bought, ever, and and they look like jeans. I wear them in public as though they are jeans. So in the description box below, there will be a link to actually, oh my gosh, everything I'm wearing today. That was not really on purpose. I got this top from Amazon and I got the bottom from a company called Ink and Burn. And I put them together today because I'll be, I'll be totally honest here, you guys. I, I knew that I was gonna do strength training today, but I kinda had to talk myself into it a little bit, so I put on a cute outfit. Cause you know, when you look cute, you feel good. You feel a little bit more motivated to work out. Let's go ahead and do some arm crossers with booty kickers. So you guys, in the description box below, in addition to the dumbbells that I bought from Amazon, I if I am wearing something that is purchasable, like easily purchasable, I will always have links in the description. I don't. I, I don't shop online all the time. They're, the clothes that I buy are not always available, but when they are, I will make them available to you because I love this top. It is the most comfortable thing I've ever purchased. I already told you about the leggings. I, I needed it for today. <laughs> you guys. We are strength training today, as I mentioned. I was, I love strength training. This is the kind of workout that I enjoy. I specifically programmed it in a way that I'm excited about. And yet there was still just that element of of something. You know how that happens sometimes, even when you love working out, how some days you just gotta talk yourself into it. And that's what I did. I talked myself into it by wearing a cute outfit, programming it the way I wanted it to be. I hope that that works for you today too, my friends. Let's do some welcome to my homes. Let's make sure, oh my goodness, that your shoulders specifically are feeling good and open and warm. Really, really thinking about moving your arm through its entire range of motion here. Stretching out your abs, getting ready to really pull in your core and focus today. Making sure that your hips, your legs, your knees, your ankles, your toes, that they've gotten all their cracks and creaks out. We are picking up heavy things and putting them back down again. And I have my timer so that I don't have to count because that's how we do things around here. But also, because of the way this workout is structured, I know it's gonna feel cardio-like even though it's not. This is strength, we're slow moving, we're focusing on form but we're also moving along in the workout kind of quickly. I've got the handy dandy gym box here set for intervals of 20 seconds. Not a long time on any one exercise, but we're going inchworm style. One of my favorite things. We're gonna start with one exercise just to get going before we rest. But then after that, we are inching our way through my list of exercises, doing two at a time. It's a long work interval and I want you to really be warmed up and ready for it. When you are ready, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my dumbbells here. We're getting started with overhead to high knees, which is exactly 
exactly what it sounds like. Gonna start off with the dumbbells up overhead, coming down to one high knee, and then the other one. Let me go ahead and get the timer going so that we can get that on the clock. So hands up overhead, down to one high knee, and down to the other, thinking about a good press up, thinking about having your biceps end right up next to your ears. Think about pulling in that core, pulling your knee up with precision, making sure that your standing knee is soft but strong. When it beeps, ah, we're gonna get 20 seconds of rest. Now here's the thing about rest with dumbbells in your hands, kinda doesn't feel like rest. <laughs> So make sure that you're moving at a pace that's nice and moderate, getting the work done, not worrying about too many reps, not worrying about being perfect, but focusing on good form and doing your best when it beeps. Gonna do those overhead to high knees one more time. This is how we inchworm our way through a workout. When it beeps again, rather than resting, we're gonna do something called twisting high knees. So we're still doing high knees. A Little bit more balance work here but we're twisting instead. So you're gonna have your hands down at about chest or weight height, wherever feels good. We're going to twist away from your high knee. So if your left knee is coming up, you're twisting your torso right into that high knee. Really feeling this work in your abs and obliques, and yes, getting some bonus upper body biceps work by having these weights right here in your hands. Okay, 20 seconds of rest. Yeah, I know, it's strength work, and yet my heart is pounding when it beeps again. We're gonna do those twisting high knees again, but we're gonna pair them with a front raise, side raise combo, meaning that one hand is doing a front raise and the other hand is doing a side raise. I love this one because I have to think about it so hard. So here we go with the twisting high knees, thinking about keeping your hips pointed forward, core pulled in tight, standing leg, your knee is never locked really twisting as much as you can, not just getting your arms over your shoulder here, but trying to get your whole torso twisted. And then here we go with that front raise, side raise combo. Spread your feet to about hip width apart. Knees are soft but strong, core is pulled in tight. I'm gonna say that for every single exercise. Dumbbells face your body and then dumbbells face the ground. One hand coming forward, one hand going out to the side. 20 seconds of rest. I love that front raise, side raise combo because I really have to think about it. Like it's just coordinated enough that I really have to think about which arm is doing which thing. So then if we're gonna do that again, when it beeps doing that front raise, side raise combo and this time we're pairing it with X marks the spot, which is another abs and obliques exercise. So this front raise, side raise combo, when it beeps, we're gonna put your dumbbells together. Gonna to have your dumbbells starting up at one shoulder, and then we're gonna make a chopping motion down to the opposite hip. And then we're gonna bring them up to the other shoulder and chop down to the other hip. You're creating the letter X in the air. So both the hands together, we're gonna to chop down to one hip, up to shoulder, chop down to the other. Really, really controlling this motion by squeezing your abs and obliques keeping that core pulled in tight, up to your shoulder, chop it down. Oh my gosh, chop it down. <laughs> 20 seconds of rest. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. We're not getting a ton of reps done because it's you know only 20 seconds, but the intensity of the work is totally there even in a short interval. When it beeps again, gonna do that X marks the spot again, paired with oblique crunches. We're gonna have our hands up. Let me go ahead and do the X marks the spot. I will describe it to you. So thinking about making that, oh, that chopping X right there in front of you. When it beeps again, you're gonna have your hands on your shoulders with your elbows pointed out to the sides. We're gonna do oblique crunches, meaning that we're going to bring our elbows to our knees and our knees to our elbows, one at a time. So hands up, elbows out. Bring your elbow down to your knee while your knee comes up to your elbow. Really feeling that Oddly enough, much more in my hip complex than in my abs and obliques. To be fair though, my abs and obliques are pretty strong compared to my hips. My hips still need this work. 20 seconds of rest. Oh my gosh, you guys. <sighs> Taking some nice big deep breaths. I'm just doing a little bit of tapping here because my heart, my heart thinks this is cardio today. <laughs> when it beeps again, we're doing those oblique crunches paired with bent over flies. The bent over part of the fly is essentially, here we go with those oblique crunches. The bent over part is essentially like half of a deadlift. You're gonna make sure that your back is 
super, super straight, super, super strong. Your core is pulled in tight. Your hips are pushed back behind you. While we're in that half bent over position, we're gonna fly our arms out to the side. So here we go. Coming into that half of a deadlift and flying your arms out. If your weights are starting to feel very, very heavy, feel free to drop to a lighter pair or drop them completely. This kind of work done with body weight, still plenty of strength and toning to be had. 20 seconds of rest. You guys, finding what's moderate might mean coming way down the ladder here. It doesn't mean that you have to just struggle through or do less or, I mean, heaven forbid, have poor form. We're gonna do those bent over flies again, paired with sidekick curls. I'm gonna go ahead and think about my bent over fly form. Here we are. A sidekick curl, we're doing biceps curls, which means that you're gonna have your elbows really locked into your waist. As you are bringing one foot up to the side in a sidekick, we're gonna curl into a biceps curl. So you're doing a little bit, it's a complex exercise. We're doing upper body and lower body, and yeah, even a little bit of balance. So a sidekick with a curl, and a sidekick with a curl. Oh my gosh, this is a lot to think about. <laughs> when it beeps again, we're gonna get 20 seconds of rest. I knew this was gonna be challenging today. I love the inchworm format, but I also knew that it was gonna be a lot to think about with transitions, you guys. 20 seconds of rest. Okay, but here's the good news. We're almost at the end of our little inchworm circuit here. We're gonna go through all of these one more time. So we're gonna do the sidekick curls, and this time it's paired with squats. Just plain old regular squats. You're welcome to have your hands down at your sides or at your chest. Whatever works for you works for me, my friends. The work, especially, is in the squat on that one. These sidekick curls, feeling it in my upper body and my lower body and my abs. It's a little bit of everything here. When we get into those squats, we're thinking about excellent form. Feet about hip width apart. I'm gonna have my hands right about here in the middle. Feet about hip width apart. Push your hips back before you push your hips down. Really thinking about taking the time here. We could go faster, of course we could. It's a 20 second interval, but it's not cardio. So excellent form, not letting your knees come over your toes. Really thinking, well right now we're thinking about taking a little bit of a rest, 20 seconds. But when it goes again, and we do squats again, we're really thinking about pushing your hips back, pulling in your core, keeping your head up, your chest out. Excellent form is the way we make the best adaptations. When we're kind of sliding through, here we go with squats, just kind of putting our body through the motions, we don't really get the same kind of results as when we're thinking about it and using excellent form. When it beeps again, we're going back to the beginning of the circuit, which is the overhead to high knees. So really thinking once again about having your core pulled in tight, hands up overhead, bringing them down to one high knee, remembering to breathe, and your other high knee. You know, we've talked a lot about moderation and weight loss results. But here's the thing about doing any kind of strength training at all. 20 seconds of rest. Your body wants to improve. Your body wants to not necessarily put on a lot of muscle tone, but it wants to feel good about the work that you're doing. So it's going to adapt when it beeps again. We're doing that overhead to high knees paired with the twisting high knees. So here we go, up overhead. For the last time, this is exciting. We have inchwormed our way past this exercise. When it beeps, we'll do that twisting high knees. So when we do strength work like this, your body is going to make adaptations. You're going to see some muscle tone. So here we go, twisting into that high knee. Even if you are using light weights, even if we are moderating our workout here, you could see some physical changes and some physical results from this kind of work. 20 seconds of rest. So you wanna make sure that you're using excellent form so that you are not accidentally injuring yourself. I mean, obviously that's the, the worst thing that you could do, but also making sure that you're using your big muscles so that we get big results. When it beeps, doing that twisting high knees with the front raise, side raise combo. So here we go with the twisting high knees. What often happens when we are not using excellent form 
is that we are actually recruiting some of our littler muscles. Now your little muscles, I mean, they need to work too, obviously. They're little muscles, they need the work. But what can happen with that, when your little muscles, here we go with that front raise, side raise, your little muscles don't, they don't show up as much. They don't change the shape of your body as much. And, and your little muscles, Oh my goodness, I'm sorry, I'm thinking really hard about this. Your little muscles won't change your metabolism very much the way that working your big muscles do. And here's 20 seconds of rest. Your little muscles aren't meant to do big work, which really does put us back in that we could injure ourselves category. So being careful with your form, thinking about your core, thinking about how your body is moving through space, it's important to get your best results. Here we are with that front raise, side raise combo. Ah, for the last time, excellent job. Tucking your tailbone under a little bit, make sure that your core is pulled in tight squeezing, squeezing, squeezing from those big muscles in your back, not just the tops of your shoulders. And here we are with X marks the spot. I spread my feet a little bit wider. Down, chop, up to your shoulder, chop it down to your hip. Awesome job chopping and stopping the chopping by squeezing your abs. Goodness gracious, I think this one might be Oh my gosh, well it's the fastest moving one, Whew, which makes it almost the hardest one. Definitely got my heart right up. Here's 20 seconds of rest. When it beeps again, gonna do that X marks the spot one more time with those oblique crunches. So it's double abs on this part of the inchworm. You guys, you guys, if you're doing it right, literally every exercise in the world is abs work. Here we go with X marks the spot, especially when we're picking up heavy things and putting them back down again. You've heard how many times I've said to you today to pull in your core. When your core is pulled in, you're working your abs. Oh my gosh, and it's totally okay to grunt when it beeps. We're putting your hands up on your shoulders with your elbows out to the side, and here we are crunching, trying to get that knee all the way up to your elbow. It's a little bit, it's about an inch more than you actually want to go, and that's totally okay to take your time and really squeeze all the way up. This isn't cardio, even though it feels like it, 20 seconds of rest. It really is strength, and strength means that we're taking the time to go that extra inch. You guys, when it beeps again, we're doing those oblique crunches paired with the bent over flies. So I'm gonna go ahead and have my hands up on my shoulders here, getting ready for those oblique crunches. And here it comes, squeeze and squeeze, taking your time to get settled in between. It's not cardio, so we're gonna go ahead and take that time to really find your balance in between. Make sure you're using good form. When it beeps, pushing your hips back, back, back into that fly position, or rather the bent over position, from which we're going to fly. Big muscles in your back, <sighs> means a big change for your metabolism, my friends. Your muscle tissue is more metabolically active, which means that it burns more calories. 20 seconds of rest. It burns more calories every second of every day than other kinds of tissue in your body. That's really exciting. It's why we work with weights. It reshapes our body, but it helps our body burn more all the time. When it beeps again, doing those bent over flies paired with the sidekick curls. Go ahead and find your excellent form, pushing your hips back behind you, finding your balance and flying when it beeps. I think this is probably the quickest transition coming up out of this bent over position, up into those biceps curls with the side kick. Elbows lock into your waist, and here we go. Kick and curl and kick and curl. This one is almost definitely gonna make an appearance as some kind of cardio move soon. I'm really enjoying this. And it feels like it could be done faster than this, like in a good way, 20 seconds of rest. Excellent job, you guys, you guys. We've almost made it to the end of this inchworm. This is very exciting. We're gonna do those sidekick curls one more time, paired with plain old squats. I know, there, there's nothing plain or old about squats. Go ahead and turn those dumbbells out. Let's get ourselves ready for that kick 
and curl, full curl and full extension. Concentrating on lots of body parts for this exercise. Core is pulled in tight, stabilizing your hips, stabilizing your arms. When it beeps, going right into those squats. Awesome job, hands right here at your chest. Whatever feels comfortable to you. Thinking about good squat form. Your head is up, your chest is out. You're getting down as low as you can, as low as you can stand up from. That might be a lot lower or a lot higher than me. Either way, either way, my friend, you've done an excellent job with this 20 seconds of rest. And then you guys, I've only got one final little bit of the inchworm here and that's squats. One more time, we finish the way we start with just one exercise and then rest. You guys, I know, you've done a really good job on this. This, is, this has been a challenge for me today. Here we go with squats all by themselves. And you know, I said that we were doing one more exercise and then rest, we're actually not resting because when we're done this with, with this, we are done, but we're not quite finished. We're gonna do one final high knee exercise, a little bit more balance work. We're gonna do a high knee triceps pull down. So have your dumbbells together, hands up overhead with your elbows right next to your ears. We're going to pull your triceps down, meaning that you're touching the weights towards your back while bringing up one high knee at a time and yes we are doing this for two intervals that was the first one done but only two intervals there's no inchworming or anything about this when it beeps again it's the last time it's going to beep this is plenty of burn making sure that your elbows are pointed forward the entire time good form core pulled in you are rocking this and now Ah, now we're done. We're done rocking it. I'm gonna go ahead and put these dumbbells completely out of the way. I'm gonna turn off the timer. I'm gonna do some arm circles. <laughs> that, oh my gosh, that sounds like it's gonna feel very, very nice. I love, 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 love this cool down, you guys. What a treat it is to take this minute or two at the end of our workout each and every day that we've been working out together and just let your body absorb what it just went through. <laughs> let your brain kind of catch up and think, oh my gosh, we just did our 23rd day of working out together. I'm super, super proud of you. Today was Today was very different. I mean, we've done strength training before, but strength training with an inchworm and with short intervals and very challenging exercises, this one, this one for me was tough to moderate and I hope that it was the right amount of challenge for you. Let's go ahead and do arm openers ah, and crossers. Give yourself a big, big hug. Oh, so proud of you. Such a good job today. Open it up, let your chest open up and stretch. Oh my gosh, even look up a little bit and really feel that good stretch in your chest. And then close it up real tight, really stretch across your shoulders because oh my goodness, we did a lot of shoulder work today, my friends. Here on screen, I am gonna have an extended cool down for you like I do every single day. I know that some of you have both the time and the inclination to do a little bit more stretching and I will always encourage you to do that. On the other side of the screen is the playlist with what's going to be all 31 of these workouts. Right now there's only 23, but at the end of the month, they'll be there all in one place for you to repeat as often as you'd like. On the bottom of the screen is the letter P and that is an invitation to go over to Patreon where a monthly pledge from you can help me make free workouts like this for all of us. And thank you so much for that. On the other side of the screen is a picture of me that's actually a subscribe button. <laughs> make sure that you click that and the bell notification so YouTube will let you know every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for working out with me today. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow.